Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India One of the uh, elements in uh, the ecosystem is the institutions. The institutions are the government and the social groups. Now, in the supply chain which delivers products to the consumers end to end, starting with the suppliers to <coughs> the consumers through retailers, how does the institutions play a role and what kind of role do they play? Is it positive, negative and how does it affect your supply chain? This is a very important qu question particularly whether you are a global or local, local, question, local uh, company. Uh, Metro Cash and Carry is a German company. It is a wholesaler and basically they wanted to enter India. When they wanted to enter India, they they were allowed uh, to be a wholesaler and later they started playing uh, having problems. So, the problems are this case illustrates what kind of how companies have to be careful and how they should expect anticipate the kind of problems that they can get from bureaucracies, they can get from the state or central governments and also from the social groups. When you are entered to be a wholesaler, there are other wholesalers in India and there are other shops who basically sell FMC products, fruits, vegetables and other products to the consumers. So, they, what, is, what kind of resistance you face from them? These are issues which are much more than your supply chain issues. Usually, if you are considering say, uh, the fruits and vegetables supply chain, then you are worried about the farmers, you are worried about the quality of the products, you are worried about uh, uh, how to transport, the problem of transportation, the cold chain and other issues. But when the problems come from the institutions, the social groups and the governments, then you are, you are basically, uh, uh, you are hit hard because they are coming from the government who are lawmakers and also you will have no choice but to uh, abandon your efforts or follow the line. So, this is what happened and uh, let us look at this case which is very illustrative of this. So, what is the retail scenario in India? Why is it important that these problems come in and how did the metro cash carry enter India? It entered Bangalore and uh, later into Hyderabad and so on. Why did it have problems in India? And it was in other emerging markets from uh, like Russia and China. What are the learns, le lessons learned from Russia and China? And they were highly successful in China and Russia and which are also emerging markets. Why did they have problems in, in India? And how did they enter India and what are the risks they have faced and what are the lessons? So, it is a, it's a case where the institution problems, how do you, how do companies face the institutes problems and how to mitigate them. So, what is the retail scenario in India? Retail scenario and it is the ecosystem of this. You know, for example, the retail sector in India has, uh, it is high growing, you know, it is uh, 201 billion dollars, it is going to 450 billion dollars and it is market size. Uh, 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 has doubled, almost doubled and so on. So, the sector has grown from uh, 201 billion to a market size of 425 in 2010 and so on. So, it is a growing sector and what is the, what are the, uh, uh, the products that has? I mean, it, this shows that the food and groceries, food and grocery sector is almost like 60 percent 
and clothing and fashion is 9.9 percent clothing and fashion and 48 percent of total household income was spent on food and groceries. So, people who are want to enter India into the retail sector, they have to basically look at what is the kind of spending that people do. People spend 48 percent of the total household income on food. And if you are doing into a retail and 60 percent of your retail is food. So, if you are entering into other sockets, you can estimate your market size based on this. Out of this 400 and odd billion dollars, you have 200, uh, 240 billion goes into food and the other expenditure, other sectors go into this. So, basically you have clothing, fashion, beauty, wellness, electronics, furniture and so on. Now, what are the products that we have? We say we have two sectors here. One is organized sector, another is unorganized sector. In the organized sector, you know, you have basically clothing is 39 percent in the organized sector, whereas in the unorganized sector, food and grocery is that. So, food itself is 252 dollars per billion dollars and 30 percent share of fruits, vegetables, staples and so on. And April has the men's wear, women's wear, children's wear and, and, and others and electronics is basically 20 to 25 billion dollars, uh, uh, home electronics, telecom, consumer durables and so on. So, what, what you should see here is that when you are entering into India as a, a foreigner into or if you are opening a store with wholesaler, then you are entering into organized retail. And in the organized retail, there is 60 percent of the unorganized retail, all the Kirana shops, which are 12 million of them, they are the unorganized retail. So, you face competition, you are competing against them and basically they employ about 30 million people. So, there is all kinds of political and social pressures saying that the organized retail is getting into the livelihood of 30 million people. <coughs> So, the issues are that one has to be careful when getting into the retail sector because you are up against about 12 million Kirana shops and push carts and so on who are self-employed and they basically employ 30 million people. So, and if you are an organized retailer and which you cannot, you cannot obviously employ 30 million people and if you cannot generate that kind of employment. And these are people who have, who know uh, only how to speak, they do not know how to read and write and they are seventh grade or less educated. So, there are all kinds of other issues that the governments face and because of that this creates a huge social and political issue. So, if you look at the retail chains in India, retail chains in India, what are all, who are all the stakeholders of the retail, this one? They are what are called mandis, which are farmers markets and these are where all the, all the uh, farmers take their products to for selling it to the, uh, to the retailers and they are of course commissioner agents and they are mills who basically buy the paddy uh, or wheat from uh, the farmers and then they make it to the rice or, or uh, atta and so on. So, they are basically the mandis or the farmers market and the commission agents and farmers and farmers cannot sell directly to the retailers and retailers cannot buy from the farmers, they have to buy through the mandis. And there are apparent manufacturers who are distributors, there are all kinds of brands and so on. And there are lots of SMEs in the SME, in the manufacturers who manufacture saris and other kinds of things uh, into this and manufacture of household items like crotchery, crockery and so on and furniture, timber factories, carpentry firms and manufacturers and distributors of electronic goods and household appliances, books, magazines, distributors, book companies, 
medical and pharmaceutical goods, agents, distributors and manufacturers and each commodity has a different supply chain and related issues. In other words, if you are if you are looking at FMCG, it's another thing. If you are looking at apparel, it has its own supply chain from cotton uh, till uh, you know the short pant or something. And if you are looking at furniture, it has its own supply chain. And if you are looking at household appliances, they have their own supply chains, and so on. So medical pharmaceutical is another another big thing, and so on. So these are all the stakeholders in the retail this one I mean pharmaceutical goods to uh, this one they are pharmaceutical uh, outlets where uh, the medical shops as they are called and they are basically uh, the retailers you, they, they sell I guess the prescription from a doctor and so on. Now each commodity has a different supply chain and this is the retail scenario in India I mean this is true in any country that the retail is basically a conglomerate of all these kinds of products and so on. So what is the kind of ecosystem that uh, this has? Let us look at what are the factors that control the retail ecosystem and since we are concentrating on India because metro cash and carry is having problems in India, let us look at um, the retail in this uh, this one. So the forward uh, uh, supply chain in uh, uh, and this is uh, they, you have of course food and grocery where you have farm to uh, to the to the mandi to from mandi to the retailers and so on and you have utensils and books and furniture pharmacy and hygiene and apparel as we have seen these are some things and uh, this is the forward supply chain and there are basically institutions that come into play the governments there is what is called APMC Act and this and also public distribution system. So the APMC Act basically says that uh, you know the farmers cannot directly sell to the retailers this act came into existence just to protect the farmers because the retailers cannot have a contract farming or something and then they try to now marginalize the farmers and the public distribution system is basically there are there are there are 700 million people who are basically poor and the government gives subsidized food products to them. So for that it is a pretty yes the uh, public distribution system the government maintains the warehouses and so on and for that they procure from the farmers. So and the government pays um, a little more than the market price so that it induces the farmers to sell it to the government. And you have of course foreign retailers, you have a lot of uh, central state governments and political and social activists and business organizations here. So you have the retailers which are, who are foreign or, uh, or Indian and the problems that the retailers face could be from political and social activists which here this also concerns business associations or organizations like for example there are hawker associations, uh, there are uh, kirana shop associations and so on. So basically these have a lot of political power because they, they know the politicians and their vote banks and 12 million Kirana shops uh, basically is a lot of this one and they employ 30 million people. <coughs> so if you look at uh, for example the, the resources, there are agriculture and mandis are the resources, SMEs uh, for grocery, furniture manufacturers, transportation and ICT and that is the coal chains and all that. Do you require mall space? Mall space is one of the very expensive things in India. And that is one of the factors <coughs> uh, that will increase the, uh, the the space because the malls are basically are uh, there in big cities and big cities in the center of the cities or in 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 business districts the mall space is highly expensive and of course you require financial resources now the financial resources um, uh, the retail is not considered as an industry so you cannot get loans 
you have to take a personal loan and warehousing and cold chain. So, these are the, uh, uh, the resources that one needs for retail and of course, the warehousing in the center parts of the city, in the center of the city where the malls are, it becomes a big issue. So, the backward supply chain, the backward supply chain, which is basically uh, behind the, uh, the scenes up to the mall, from mall to the customer is one thing and up to the mall is the, is the, the behind the uh, scene supply chain becomes difficult and also the warehouse, which is to be cold chain and all that. And you have, <coughs> you have the Kirana shops and push carts for the retail. And we have food courts and restaurants because the food can be sold as a as a uh, processed or uh, uh, the food items. You have retail stores, other retail stores, internet retail, home delivery is also becoming uh, uh, popular in India. There are there are uh, organizations like Amazon. Uh, there are organizations like Flipkart who sell uh, on the internet retail and they do home delivery and so on. Of course, they are wholesalers and training institutes. But training institutes for retail, there are few, but they are not uh, they are not very common and very well organized. But so uh, this is the issue. So what the retail has, this is the the uh, ecosystem of the retail in this in India. Now, when any particular farm uh, company like MCC wants to enter in India, what is the kind of thing they are competing against all these people? They are competing against Kirana shops, they are competing against retail stores, they are competing against food courts and so on. But one thing that people, they are not actually competing against them, but they are being suppliers to them. So, they are competing with the uh, the uh, the, um, uh, the people who are intermediaries between the farmers and the Kirana shops. And they are politically sensitive and they form the political associations and so on. So, let us look at uh, this. So, this is the retail uh, scenario in India. So, what is the metro cash and carry doing in India? <coughs> Traditional wholesaling, highly specialized assortment of merchandise delivered to customers on credit. Metro cash and carry is a self-service wholesaler. I think you should look at credit is available in usual traditional wholesaling, but metro is A, a self-service and B, it is cash and carry. So, sells a wide range of food and non-food items at large warehouses on immediate cash payment, transportation taken care of by the customer, that is the self-service and the feature high quality goods. Now, this is one model that is popular in Germany and other places, uh, even in the United States, there are lots of cash and carry models and target customers of self-service wholesalers. Who are the target customers? Business customers, institutions, SMEs including hotels, restaurants, kirana shops, bars, cafes, etc. and food retailers, government, non-profit institutions and so on. So, these are all the target customers and so on. So, what uh, the wholesaler like Metro Cash and Carry does is they take goods from the farmers and they make it available at a place for bulk purchase. You cannot individual consumers are not allowed into this one. You have to have a business. So, those businesses, they can enter and get it at a wholesale price. And the product is good, the quality is guaranteed, the high quality is guaranteed and Metro acts as an intermediary. And value generated for government with tax collections, informal transactions on retail account for 97 percent. In India, the organized retail is very little and so, if, if this kind of thing, 
not only metro if others also have uh, either cash and carry or credit models but organized retail organized wholesalers organized retail then the government uh, will have a lot of taxes collected what is the cash and carry wholesale in india currently apart from metlo cash and carry south africa's shop right and home grown itc's chopal fresh has set up shops in this format and competition is likely to hot up in few years an entry of the world's biggest retailer walmart entry into the country with its uh, sam's club chain of stores and reliance is betting big on b2b business being carried through rangers form cash and carry wholesale format i mean there are other players who are not uh, they're not become big they are not taken care of and so on for a variety of reasons for the same reasons that cash and carry is is having problems with so let's look at some of them so where can mcc create value why why what is the uh, this one about that sales as a b2b intermediary reducing waste and introducing quality now when you buy from farmers or when you get it from smes and so on you are produce, you are basically sourcing quality goods and it's a b2b intermediary it doesn't sell to the direct customers now when you are when you are doing this you are ensuring quality and you are basically educating the smes and transaction facilitator provides infrastructure connecting buyers and sellers restaurants hotels kirana shops with farmers and fmcg players so all these they provide cold chains they provide temperature sensitive transport and all that and they are acting as intermediaries so aggregators and distributors one stop shopping for buyers and provides the small suppliers they reach so in other words you need not to go to 100 places uh, one thing for utensils another thing for uh, uh, for fruits vegetables another thing and so on if you are a shop owner you can have a deal with <coughs> a card with mcc or any other wholesaler and you can procure from them you can procure all the items and then ship it to your shop so quality guarantee or mca shows buyers of the quality of the goods standards of hygiene and weights and measures weights is a very important problem because they say it's it's 1 kg or 1 pound or something you are not sure it is so but that is guaranteed by mcc so advisor mcc provides market information so it basically provides to the retailers the information about the market information about uh, you know what is happening in the market and so on so it is basically an intermediary that is needed in india not only through mcc but through any other source but any intermediary will have problems why so the organized supply chain player initial impact direct linkages between customer organized supply chain player initial impact direct linkage between uh, customer and producer both food and non food enhanced distribution reach especially for smes and farmers smes benefit from reduction in supply chain costs smes they need not have to do the marketing themselves directly with the retailers they can just sell it to uh, to to metro or uh, Uh, are the wholesaler and they can get the benefits and smes benefit from access to technology and systems that's another thing and they need not have to have warehouses they need not have to have temperature sensitive stuff and so on improvement in the general level of hygiene and food safety so the organized supply chain player is has this initial impact and why mcc has problems in india let's look at the problems so despite a compelling value proposition and a tremendous need for an intermediary like itself mcc is struggling in india 
for businesses seeking national presence, it is important to investigate what policy spheres are under the purview of the central government and what is it up to local discretion. So, in India, there are there is central government and there are 28 states and six union, six or seven union territories and so on. So, the agriculture is a state subject and if you are talking of retailing, it is a state subject. But the FDI, the, the foreign direct investment and permitting foreign uh, businesses into India is a central subject. So, if, this, if yeah, the basically the central government admits or permits for the FDI of any company into India, but it is up to the state whether to accept it or not. There is no compelling compulsion on the state that it should go into it is going to this one. So, some states accept and some states may not. For example, uh, in a case of MCC, Karnataka, which is the state in which Bangalore is the capital, it is uh, accepted. And then <coughs> in Hyderabad and the other Pradesh, uh, uh, the state has accepted it. But some other states, Maharashtra has accepted MCC, but there are some other states which may not accept this and so on. So, it is up to the state to accept this. In India, the central government awards the FDI and the state governments are the sole control of several areas including agriculture marketing. So, Metro entered India in May 2004 and there is also the party issues here. The BJP which is currently in opposition led co coalition is at the center voted out by a Congress party led coalition. Uh, no, this one let it was later voted out. Karnataka state government in turn changed hands and BJP led coalition replaced the Congress government. So, when in 2004 BJP was at the center and Congress was uh, uh, at the state and afterwards soon afterwards in the next elections then Congress was at the center and BJP is at the state. So, the change of the government basically per, per, per changes the policies here. So, I mean it, 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 this is unfortunate, but it happens in every country that whenever there is a change of hands in the, in the country, then it puts pressure on the industries, particularly sensitive industries like agriculture, like retail and so on which affects the common man. So, Bangalore wholesalers protest against MCC. So, in October 2003, Chairman CEO of Metro AG opened a Metro Cash and Carry Distribution Center in Bangalore. On the same day, the Bangalore Traders Association Committee and Swadeshi Jagran Manch, Manch activists protested against the opening of the Metro Center at the APSC Act in Ashwantpur in Bangalore. So, the Bangalore Traders Action Committee, they are the ones, they also said there was a newspaper article, the Bangalore retailers combined released half page ad to the local newspapers comparing Metri to the East India Company. You know, century back, the centuries back, the East India Company is the one which entered Calcutta in India and that has led to the British rule in India and India has gained independence in 1947. So, what uh, people, when people start comparing the metro with the East India Company, then that raises uh, people against, uh, against metro. So, to most Indians, the imagery evoked what that was two centuries of exploitation. So, it becomes a anti-national feeling, I mean national feeling and anti-MCC uh, feeling which is unfortunate. So, what happens here whenever you are an wholesaler and you are trying to enter into India, then you have to be extremely careful what are the kinds of political factors that you are going to get in. You are up against traders, you are up against commission agents, you are up against Kirana shops and although you are providing tremendous amount of value to this and you require permissions from the state government, central government and so on. So, your institutions and social groups 
and business organizations. They are the ones that affect your this one, although you are creating a lot of value in the supply chain. So that is the one that is important point that this one this also brings to focus, brings to focus the importance of the ecosystem consideration, particularly when you are planning something big into or moving into a new country or you are planning an industry, even in your own country, it is better to map and you may be up against other state governments, other trade associations and so on. So, basically the issue is this brings to the focus that the ecosystem, if Metro has done this ecosystem mapping probably it would not have faced these kind of problems. But I know they have done the supply chain analysis and how the farmer gets only 20 percent of uh, the consumer, what the consumer pays and the intermediaries consume the rest. But it did not do an analysis on what are the kinds of risks it is going to face from social groups as well as the governments. So, lessons learned from Russia, I mean this um, uh, metro was in Russia and China and uh, what they thought was since uh, these emerging markets are the so called BRIC countries, Brazil, Russia, India and China, they are all grouped as one emerging markets. They thought if they have their experience in Russia and China will come in very handy, but it did not. Let us see what the lessons they learned from this one. So, they have the speed of entry, they had basically in Russia 22 stores in the first 5 years and in China 8 stores in first 5 years and then 17 in the next few years thereafter. Slow, slow ramp up because of lacked a patron like mayor of Moscow in Russia. So, in Russia the patron was the mayor of Moscow. So, they were that they have political support, but in China they did not have political support and that has this one. And what about the joint venture? Did they enter alone or they went into uh, with somebody else? Not present, I mean basically perhaps not needed with a local government patron. So, when the government, local government like you know uh, like the, the, uh, the uh, mayor of Moscow. Uh, it was not present joint, joint it went alone, but in China it retained a joint venture with SOE Jinyang group even after rules were requiring it were relaxed. In other words when MCC entered into China it has to enter as a joint venture that was the rule. So, it went into SOE Jinyang group even after, but even after the rules were there it retained that. What about local politics? In Moscow, mayor is the only authority, he is supportive of Metro's help in cleaning up the local black market. So, basically they had political support and mayor is committed to the, uh, the so called black market. But in China, tension between central and local governments authority, but more authority, but more authority and clearer power structure than in India. In other words, there is in China also there is center and local and, and city governments. In fact, the layered structure is well organized and each is, uh, each knows what it is. And so, but in India there is the tension and local competition in, in Russia it is fragmented and there is a fog of competitors in this, I mean in China. And management team in Russia it is expatriate management and in China also it is expatriate management. So, if you look at uh, this I mean given that they are successful in both in China and Russia and but one thing you should remember is both are both are uh, countries with vertical, vertical governments and whereas uh, uh, although 
to the distribution their states center and all that. So, since they are successful in China and Russia they thought they will be successful in India. So, how did they enter India? <coughs> Metro Centre strategy into India is that uh, Metro CNC entered India, Indian wholesale market by opening two stores in Bangalore <coughs> in the year 2003. Now, why Bangalore and why two stores at the same place? Opened a new store in Hyderabad in 2006, no store added since 2003 to 2006, but they have added later uh, uh, stores in um, Naharashtra, Bombay, Mumbai and all that. And strong growth sites, they are institutional voids. In other words, for example, why, why when, when it entered into India, what are the growth signs? Now, first of all, there is no logis there is logistics absent between the farm and the, the, the retail. There are no warehouses, there is no organized retail, there are no wholesalers. The farm fresh is directly uh, sold uh, to the consumers and 30 percent of the wastage is this one. So, these are the kinds of voids that the, the wholesale system has, the food supply chain has. And also, you know, the, there is raising uh, living standards because of the IT industry. There are a lot of people who are making a lot of money and so on. And a lot of people are migrating to, to the cities and they want the products, the healthy products and so on. So, 34 increase, 34 percent increase in consumer price spending in 2001 to 5. So, if you look at the retail spending, I mean it was growing, growing high and people, people wanted uh, more fresh foods, not buying from the farms and so on. So, the living standards are increasing because the middle class has increased. And value proposition to play a master role in filling institutional voids. The absent market structure connect the suppliers with the market. In other words, if you look at the, the, the entire uh, uh, farm to fork supply chain, it is highly fragmented and there is no transportation, proper transportation connecting the farms to the retailers. There are no cold chain, there are no warehouses. So, all these reasons give you why it is, I mean there is, there are gaps to be filled in. And a wholesaler like Metro is tremendously needed in India at that time. So, what is the entry strategy it followed? <coughs> It entered India alone. Should it have a joint venture? Would it have benefited if it had joined, had a joint venture? Maybe yes, maybe, maybe not. Maybe yes, if the joint venture partner is politically influential in the state. Well, these are all the, the, the questions uh, by hindsight. MCC had no strategy to involve locals, miscalculated the risks in India. What are the kinds of risks that any company faces from institutions, social groups and so on? So, if the social groups wants to prevent somebody, they can go on strike they can raise their voice in the in the media and they can bring in the political influence and the governments can ban them saying that look uh, you know you are affecting a lot of people and retail is a very sensitive subject because there are 12 million kirana shops there are hundreds of other push carts and there are lots of uh, intermediaries and so on Absence of a local partner prevented the company 
from the benefits of local knowledge connections and relationships. So we have been saying this all through this course that the uh, the knowledge connections and relationships they are they are fundamental in any firm to succeed whether it is a local or whether it is agriculture or other manufacturing and so on. That is because yeah, when you be you, your local knowledge of what, what goes in, what people use and so on and what is the kind of industry environment and your connections with, with other associations and your relationship with the government, they matter a lot. With no joint partner or an institution supporting, it is should have evaluated entry strategy more carefully considering all the possible risks. So, if Metro has asked a question when it is entering into this, what are all the risks, what are all the risks that I am going to face and assuming that the ecosystem is available at that time, I like the retail ecosystem that we have mapped here. If it were available to, to this one and then if he has written what are all the risks that are going to come from the supply chain, the quality, the, dis, the dispersed farmers and so on and also what are the points of points that are going to come from the resources like lack of cold chain, the power problems, water problems and so on and also the institutions, social and government groups and also the delivery mechanisms. If it has mapped all the supply chain this one probably it would have evaluated the risks more, more positively. So, anyway that is all theory but what are the actual risks that were faced by MCC? The analysis of metro approach location Bangalore high tech city with large expatriate and internationally savvy population. You know it is a IT capital of India, it is distant from national power centers. It has lot of middle class and uh, you know they are savvy about uh, uh, good retail, high tech food and high protein food and all that and it is distant from national power centers. You know because the power centers are in Delhi and if the party is different. I mean if Karnataka has the other party then, then the center then it will have this one. Opening two stores in one city led to greater risk of being exposed to local events. What is the ownership structure? It is only owned, no joint venture, joint venture partners the social and political connections would have benefited MCC. And what is the management team? MCC country head was a local, he is an Indian. MCC's logic probably that company should take advantage of the local management talent since local knowledge is more important than previous ties with the company. Needed other mechanisms to ensure integration between India operations and headquarters. So, any company has two issues here, one is the local issues, local management and the second one is the <coughs> like uh, you know uh, making it a one company world over, you know one MCC. Its headquarters in Germany, it has several stores in China, in other places and if the Indian company should not look different. So, it has to be, it has to be one MCC world over. So, if you want that kind of aim, then they, it has to integrate these operations and so on. So, they had a local head and the local head was uh, uh, this one, what is the product uh, range? I mean this is where the problems of institutional problems come. Limited by APMC Act precluding MCC from sourcing directly for farmers. Nothing they could do about this since it is a political and government decision. I mean even today after 8 years after their entry the APMC act is still active in a lot of states. And store operations, two large state of the art stores with super cold chain capabilities similar to the ones 
in highly developed countries have made thinking that APMC will act soon go. I think there were some risks that they have taken. There were superstores in other countries. And when they entered India, they looked at the voids that India has. It has no coal chain, it has logistics and it has no logistics and so on. So, and it has no wholesaler. So, it will probably provide all this and has built all these facilities. And since the APMC Act did not permit them to, to have the food and groceries, that has become turned against them. Government relations mostly in Delhi and none in Bangalore, MCC misread political local opposition, potential local political opposition. And public relations, market education to diffuse opposition and media relations for missing. So, this, these connections with the local uh, agencies, local organizations and the media were missing. So, MCC growth plans did not materialize that is because the food business expected to boost from 5.8 billion on the golden quadrilateral highway which would connect Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata and Chennai by end of 2006 with uh, approximately 6000 kilometers of 4 to 6 lane highways. There was what is called golden quadrilateral project which was started some 12 years ago which basically had uh, this what is called 4 to 6 lane highway connecting this is 4 uh, golden quadrilateral connecting Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata that is the north, east, south, north, south, east and west. <coughs> and people, lot of people have thought they should have, they can have uh, gas stations on the highways. They will have uh, uh, small hotels on the lodging, for lodging on the highway. They thought people will be traveling and there will be restaurants on the, on the highway. People have, uh, have planned for that and Metro thought it can have uh, some wholesale to basically cater to the thousands of restaurants at that time. However, construction is years behind schedule, it is not yet complete. So, the risk faced by MCC underestimated the delay and risk involved with bureaucratic procedures. In India's decentralized political system, national directives need not be implemented by states and local political support is crucial for rapid growth. The APMC Act became a constraint, cold chain networks planned became liabilities. And Metro faced a stumbling block, it was legally barred from purchasing fruits and vegetables directly from farmers. So, MCC has managing growth under constraints. MCC's product offering still dependent on how APMC Act is going to be amended. It is not yet so far and adjust the store format to reflect the local needs and local real estate price constraints. So, in Mumbai I was told they are, they are going vertical instead of horizontal. Build an ecosystem for its business in India by educating farmers, retailers and improving government and public relations. Navigating India's complex political environment. I mean, which is a tough job. Communicate MCC value proposition to masses through media, lobbying and other means. <coughs> now, the fact of the matter is that organizations like MCC with those business models are needed for improving the efficiency in the retail sector. But such organizations including MCC, they face lot of constraints and most of these constraints are institutional. So, it is not like there is a supply chain you can include improved the transportation between 
one place to the other and then thus solve this particular problem or it is not a manufacturing problem where you can fix it with a, with a quality control and so on. That it is when you are in a country with, with multiple uh, powerhouses, one at center and then in the state and so on and their social groups, then one had to tread carefully. So, what should be MCC's approach going forward? Well, should it, it enter into a joint venture with somebody? Maybe it is. Or should it uh, have some uh, uh, understanding with the state government doing some social work for the farmers? In other words, given the business model, given the fact that this kind of MCC and other models are required in this country. If MCC or somebody else, how do they go forward? How do they track themselves to success? That is the big issue that needs to be answered. And uh, one thing is that if you do the ecosystem analysis, at least you would know the risks. You could always, I mean all the risks you need, now you may not you may not have the capability to mitigate all the risks, particularly the ones that the uh, policies that are imposed by the government like the APMC Act. But at least uh, the awareness will create problems so that you can have your business model working around them, not against them. Anyway, 